It's seven minutes of time now. So uh, yesterday we were talking quite a bit about uh, loyalty to insurance companies, that evidence that if you stay loyal, lo and behold, Doesn't pay. Uh, you get charged more. Coletta's got a story today about more loyalty, penalising people who have loyalty. What's going on? Yeah, same kind of story that we were talking about yesterday, but uh, just a different sector. Good morning, everyone. It was insurance yesterday and it's pay rises today. Research from the jobs website Total Jobs has found that there is a difference between new recruits and people that have been in the same role for a while. So they've surveyed around 1,000 workers, uh, 1,250 employees. The bosses admitted adding an average of £1,581 to the salaries of new recruits. One of the problems here is that we don't generally like asking for a pay rise. 44% of male workers have asked their uh, employers for a pay rise and just 36% of women have done the same. Well, I'm joined this morning by Garrett Jones, who is an expert in the jobs market and a professor of economics from Lancaster University Management School. A very good morning to you. Good morning, Coletta. So to that first issue, it is very difficult, isn't it, to ask for a pay rise. Is that essentially the problem here? It is. We're used to the idea that people are paid what they're worth, that they're paid on the basis of what they contribute to a firm. Uh, but we have to distinguish between movers, people who move jobs, move between firms, and stayers, people who don't, because those who move get themselves into a position where that can be reassessed regularly, whereas those who stay put their employers in a very strong market position. So similar to the case of insurance, if you don't change your insurer year after year, then the insurer has a handle on you, has, has some kind of grip, and is able to exploit that inertia. Same kind of thing happens with firms. And we've seen several studies that have measured the impact of this on people's pay. Uh, there was a study many years ago uh, looking at care homes in the south of England, looking at care workers and seeing that they were paid about 10% less as a result of this kind of inertia. More recent study in the United States shows that the gap is about 8% for men, 5% for women. Is part of it that if you're applying for a new job, you're maybe a bit more aware of what the salary is or what the going rate is for that particular role. Whereas if you've just stayed in the job, you're less likely to be kind of looking around that current market and realising how much you should be getting paid. And your new employer needs to attract you and make sure that they are getting a return on the investment they've put in the recruitment process. So what should people do then if you are a stayer rather than a shifter? Well, people perhaps should be more willing to look around and move. Uh, on the other hand, people who do stay with their existing employers may do so for a very good reason. They may be getting benefits from that job that are not just captured by the pay packet. So they may have a congenial work environment, for example. They may enjoy being familiar with people that they've been working with for a long time. And pay transparency has obviously been in the news a, a lot lately. Would Indeed. that help in a situation like this for people to realise that actually the new guy that's just come into the office is, is being paid more than them? Well, again, there's a lot of work being done in America where some states have gone for mandatory pay transparency and others haven't. And in those states where pay transparency is mandatory, there's been some compression of the wage distribution. Uh, and that has reduced wage inequality and has reduced this problem. Uh, so that people at the top end are paid 7% less in states that have pay transparency than in states that don't. And talk us through this gender difference here. Men are more likely to ask for a pay rise. What about the, those new recruits coming in? How does that work out? Yeah, me men may be more likely to ask for a pay rise and to do so more aggressively than women. They may also be in a stronger market position than women because men tend to be more geographically mobile. Another thing that has come out of work that's been done on this is that graduates uh, tend to differ less between men and women in terms of the premium that is paid to movers. So it may be that graduates are more mobile and that that is what is driving the results that we're seeing on gender. Garrett, thank you very much for joining us this You're morning. Welcome. That's Garrett Jones there from the uh, University of Lancaster. Uh, Lancaster. Appreciate you chatting to us this morning. So it's a little bit about having the guts to ask for it, especially if uh, somebody new's arrived in the office who might be getting paid a little bit more. Do you know who'll be brilliant about talking about this later on? Mary Portas. Oh, She's cool. coming on. She's just done kind of semi-autobiography, but also a thing about standing up in the workplace, going for what you, what you believe in and kind of standing up for what you believe in as well. So she's going to be perfect about talking well, about this later. Her. Past seven, talking about the value of the pound, it's had a bit of a boost overnight. Coletta has more on that. Morning, Coletta. 
Morning, Naga. Morning, everyone. Yeah, that's right. The value of the pound has strengthened in the last few hours. One pound is currently worth just over $1.28. Its value rose by as much as 0.7% overnight. It's thought to be down to a report in the Times newspaper that says a deal has been agreed for the UK's financial services sector in the Brexit negotiations. More than a million Brits are employed in financial services. Important news if you're flying short haul with a budget airline anytime soon, Ryanair and Wizz Air have changed their rules on what bags passengers can take on board the plane. Ryanair travellers will only be allowed a small piece of hand luggage from today unless they pay for priority boarding. We'll have a lot more on that in half an hour's time. And the US has hit back at the Chancellor Philip Hammond's plans to slap a new tax on the big tech companies. American business groups and politicians have said the proposal is troubling and they've even warned it could spark a backlash or affect a potential US-UK trade deal. All eyes on those big tech firms today. In fact, the biggest of them, Apple, the most valuable company in the world, announces its latest financial results later on today. Suffered a bit of a slowdown in iPhone sales recently, but this will be the first set of results that they will be reporting since the launch of their new iPhone 8. And there's lots of chat about whether or not people are just becoming a little less excited about A little less outfit. excited, not quite updating as frequently yeah, yeah. as they had done previously. So we'll see how those sales affect. Good morning, everyone. I will do my best to explain this morning, but it can certainly be confusing. To know exactly how many bags and what size you can take into the cabin depends on which airline you're flying with. Today, the situation for a couple of companies has changed yet again. So Europe's biggest airline, Ryanair, are making their second change in hand luggage policy within a year. You used to be able to take on one small bag into the cabin and one 10 kilo wheelie bag through security for free. The wheelie bag was taken off you at the gate and popped into the hold. But from today, anyone can still take on a small bag, but only priority bookers will be allowed to take a wheelie bag through security. The smaller budget airline Wizz Air, which has a big UK base at Luton, is making a similar change. They say only one small bag can be taken into the cabin for free. Anything bigger has got to go into the hold at a charge or into the cabin if you're a priority booker. EasyJet rules are staying the same. They only allow one cabin bag per person. There's no weight limit, but you have to be able to lift it into the overhead lockers. That can be a challenge for some of us. And BA joined budget airlines in charging for food and drink on short haul flights last year. But they do allow two bags for cabin luggage as long as one is a laptop bag or a handbag. OK, so that's the basics. It can be very confusing. Megan French from Money Saving Expert can help us to try and get our heads around this one. Megan, thanks for coming in. First of all, let's have a look at these different baggage options. This huge, big, massive one, obviously, for, for, for every airline for a good long while, you can't take into the cabin with you. It's that one down there, that little wheelie one, that's, that, that's a bit more questionable, isn't it? Yeah, so this is perhaps what you call the traditional hand luggage size. You could be forgiven for thinking, I'm going away for the weekend, mm -hmm. I'll be able to take this into the cabin. Now, this isn't the case with Ryanair and Wizz Air, unless you pay extra. These are the new rules on this one. So just simply that size, would you get away with a kind of handbag? Or? Yeah, so they, the rules are, are roughly, it's 40 by 25 by 20 on Ryanair. It's got to fit under the seat in front of you. Um, so that's your only free option. So what it means is it's incredibly difficult for customers to compare flights, because if you know you're going to need one of those, you're going to have to factor in that you will pay extra costs somewhere along the line. Is it worth checking that bag in then rather than paying the extra? Which is better value to try and get it through the airport and pay as a priority booker? So the cheapest way to do it is to decide when you're booking your flight, you're definitely going to need that and you can book what's called priority boarding. So with Ryanair, that's from £6. Wizz Air, it's from £4. So if you know you're definitely not going to fit your stuff in here, plan ahead and book that straight away because if you add it on after, the price goes up and if you get to the airport, you could be looking at £20 for that. 
So basically, if you're going away for a day for a business meeting, you might be able to fit your stuff in that one. But any more than that, I say most people would struggle. I mean, I definitely would struggle with that for a weekend. <laughs> so yeah, I would need to plan ahead and book in advance. Is this a way for Ryanair just to make a whole load more cash? Is just to just sort of milk passengers for every single penny? So it says it's about streamlining it and, and stopping the delays. But as you say, this is a second change we've seen. So back in January, used to be able to take these two through security and that was tagged and put in the hold for free but now you're charged for it so whether that is really about delays is it's difficult to say and, it, and it's hard as you say when you're booking a flight then to work out exactly which is cheaper by the time you've factored in those extra costs it's also hard when you're trying to buy a bag because you don't know which airline you're going to be flying with in future and therefore what size of bag you, you can you can get away with yeah unfortunately it's all about planning ahead you know if you get in a pickle perhaps see if you can borrow one for a mate for example but as you say if you start off the right way comparing your flights just factor in exactly which airline. Do not assume that they all have the same rules. Megan, thank you very much for joining us. I hope that's a little bit clearer for uh, everyone at home. And anyone flying today, Ryan, I have changed those policies from this morning. So if you've packed already, might be a case of repacking and uh, condensing that luggage a little bit uh, for this afternoon's flight anyway. Yeah, so quite annoying, really. Yeah, I'd <laughs> say. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, good morning, everyone. That's right. The value of the pound has strengthened in the last few hours. One pound is currently worth just under $1.29. Its value rose by as much as 0.6% overnight. That's thought to be down to a report in the Times newspaper that says a deal has been agreed for the UK's financial services sector in the Brexit negotiations. More than a million Brits are employed in financial services. Important news if you're flying a short haul with a budget airline anytime soon. Ryanair and Wizz Air have changed their rules on what bags passengers can take on board the planes with them. Ryanair travellers will only be allowed a small piece of hand luggage from today unless they've paid for priority boarding. The US has hit back at the Chancellor Philip Hammond's plan to slap a new tax on the big tech companies. American business groups and politicians have said the proposal is troubling and have even warned it could spark a backlash or affect a potential US-UK trade deal. All eyes on those big tech firms today. The biggest, in fact, Apple, the most valuable company in the world, announces its latest financial results a little bit later on today. Suffered a big slowdown in iPhone sales recently, and these will be the first set of results since they announced their latest new phone models. So that will be out about five o'clock this afternoon. Okay, uh, do you think people are as excited? Uh, about the Apple results, mm. about what's happening. Phone models now. Mm, maybe not so much. Mm. That's there's, there's that moment of kind of, you know, peak phone. Do you think anyone who is updated? I suppose there's always that minority that want the latest model. Yeah, I think they're getting smaller. Okay. The state of Britain's high streets. Now the Queen of Shops, Mary Portis, is on a new mission. She wants to transform culture in the workplace and is here to tell us more about it. Good morning. Good morning. That's a big ask to change culture in the workplace. Where do you start? Well, you start work with your own workplace, which is where I started. Um, you know, effectively realising I just got tired of working in a way and a construct that felt very alpha. And it, interesting, you talked about the high street there. I remember um, when I was doing my high street review and I had this discussion with a politician about community, really, which is what high streets are about. And he said, oh, do you know, you're so emotional. You're too emotional for politics. And I thought, no, actually, that's what politics needs. And that's what business needs, a sense of emotion responsibility and behavior that's based on a good outcome rather than just the bottom line and i think that looking at the stats which you'll have looked at in my book where so few women are reaching the top this has got nothing to do with their ability it's to do with the fact that the culture of business is alienating to most women uh mary have you have you uh, during your working career you worked in many different places mm. what, what have you witnessed uh, in terms of behaviour that sort of that, that you're trying to address. Well, I think th th there's lots of things that I talk about in my book from my early days. You know, I was once exposed to by a, a, a guy I worked with in a know, workplace. In a workplace that will like, take you out for lunch, and uh, yeah, and I, I was 24, and I remember coming back to a friend and saying that happened, and she said, "Yeah, he does that to everyone." That that's the sexual sort of side of it that we're seeing, and we're seeing more and more of this happening. Um, 
But more importantly, what I realized over years of the workplace is the hierarchical linear structure means power is at the top, invariably with one person or a board of people, and invariably men, white middle class men, no offense, Charlie. But that's the state of play, and that's the state of play of most businesses today. And when you look at statistics, there are few women within those corporations. And in order to succeed, they have to lean in, as Sheryl Sandberg says, and they have to adopt those cultures, which are quite aggressive. Sheryl Sandberg from Facebook, just in case anyone... Yes, Sheryl Sandberg from Facebook. OK, Facebook. so, it's, so it's, changing, it's changing the situation now. It's changing the attitudes now. Who changes... The attitudes. If women aren't, if there aren't enough women in the in the boardroom mm. at the moment, at the top right now, and as you say, the hierarchy is is as so. How does that change? Who well, penetrates it to to make that change? Well, in my instance, I started with myself as the owner of a business and worked, you know, with a team of people from two of us, then three of us, then five of us, and then actually did it from bottom up as well. So I worked with the team of people to say, this is how we want to work. We want to develop a new culture that's about collaboration, everybody having a voice, whether you're a junior. They're having 360 degree reviews of everybody, including me. So I would have seven or eight people that would write what they think and how I worked. And I remember one night not sleeping because someone wrote, she kind of ignores people that don't rock her boat. And I'm like, do I? Yes, I do. Sort it out, Portas. Now, had that culture been in some of the businesses that we've seen, you would not have people abusing power because everybody's accountable whatever level that you are, are at. You, are you... But also change can come from the bottom. Girls and women particularly can come together, together, not just on their own. You don't need to work in a silo to push for change to happen. And we've seen that already starting in, in was it Google today? Where we yes, the walk out by staff, which is uh, their protest about things that have happened within the company, people being paid off with allegations against them. Just help me with this one, though. Yeah. The, one of the dangers is, you say that thing about bosses maybe asking their staff to be honest with them about how they are. The very ones who are most likely to be open to asking that question in the first place are probably the ones with the least to hide. I mean, it probably, if you think you run a pretty decent operation, there might be a bit of criticism here and there, you might be more feel more free to ask your staff. If you're one of the real problem people or management systems, you're probably the least likely to yeah. even start that process. This, this, this is about cultural change having to happen in business. It's got to be the future. So if I'm a business that's now working in that hierarchical structure, let's take what's been happening at Arcadia Group with Sir Philip. We don't know what's, what, but there are allegations in there. I would be, as a team of people, looking at this and realising, A, you're losing staff, B, profits aren't anywhere near as good as they, they could be, we should, it's not just the person at the top, we should, there's other people, be looking at a new culture change. Because here's the thing, unless businesses do it, they are not going to have the millennials working for them. Because th that, the millennials and Generation Z, they do not want to work in this way anymore. So it's a new way for working. It's an empowering way for working. It's a good way for working. But it also can come from the people who are coming into business saying, asking those questions when they go into a business, how many women are on the board? What's the retention rate like? How do, how's flexibility around parenting? Asking those questions and judging and deciding, do I want to work in those places? When you say work from, and I should say, Sir Philip Green has um, denied, all, denied the accusations against him wholly and categorically. Um, another statistic that we were speaking about today, Coletta was talking about when it comes to pay rises, because you're talking about working from the bottom up, changing the culture. Yeah. It's also about using your voice. And one statistic yes. Coletta was talking about today, um, when it looked for people who'd asked for a pay rise, 44% of those were men, 36% of women had yes. asked for a pay yes. rise. We're, women are still not asking as much or form for as much or speaking up. How do you change that? Well, again, this is creating a space and a place where people feel they can ask. And that's down to leadership, as well as those women, absolutely connecting with themselves and feeling more confident and starting to realise that we are absolutely every bit as good as a male working. In fact, in many instances, better, because the ability of a lot of women to juggle, and I really do mean that. We, there's another statistic that there was someone on earlier that said about a lot of men get on because they're able to travel. Wasn't, wasn't that right you had on this morning? Well, of course, someone's at home looking after the family and probably still working. So it's about young women using their voice and feeling confident that this is OK to ask. This is OK because the worst thing that can happen is they can refuse you. 
But we are going into a culture now where people have to listen. Businesses are starting to be more accountable. We are seeing a backlash. We're seeing a movement now with the Me Too movement, the gender pay gap, what's happening in Google, where businesses are starting to be accountable. Now, the only way they're going to be more accountable is by us having the confidence to say, I need to talk about my wage. Uh, Mary, it's, it's really interesting to talk to you. Thank you so much. <laughs> and just uh, the book is called Work Like a Woman. Uh, and if you'd like to chat to Mary some more, you can put your questions to her on our Instagram page. That'll happen in the next few minutes. Thank you very much.